Hello guys, welcome to Ashok IT. In this video, we are going to learn about HTML completely. Firstly, let us see what is HTML. HTML stands for Hypertext Markup Language. It is a stand-up markup language for creating web pages. It describes the structure of a web page. Like uh, it decides which element should come first and which element should come second. Okay. And what is the layout of that uh, uh, web page should be, how it should be. All these things are uh, described and decided by the HTML itself. Now, let us see what are the topics we are going to learn in this video. We'll start with introduction to HTML. Later, we will learn how to work with formatting tags and links. Later, we'll start working with images tables and lists. And after that, we'll learn the most important concept in HTML, that is how to work with forms and media. Finally, we are going to conclude this video by seeing some other good to know concepts. Let us start with introduction to HTML. First, let us learn HTML element syntax. Element syntax consists of starting tag, ending tag, and uh, we will write content between the starting tag and end tag. Now, let us see element syntax in detail. Okay. This is nothing but uh, just similar to the previous element syntax only, but this is in detail. Okay. Here, instead of starting tag, we can also call it as an opening tag. So whatever you're able to see in the blue color, this is the opening tag and this is the closing tag. The difference between opening tag and closing tag is in, instead of closing tag, you'll have forward slash. Okay, that is the difference. And here, which is in green color, here it is content. So coming to the opening tag, you can also add some attributes inside of it. Okay, what are attributes? Something like example, some examples are, class, ID, style, these are some of the attributes we can add. Attribute is divided into two parts, that is attribute name and attribute value. And remember, we will always write value inside of a quotes. Whether it may be single quote or double quote, it will work. Okay, this is the element syntax, HTML element syntax. Okay, uh, let me wrap it up. Uh, so this is the opening tag content and closing tag and inside of an opening tag remember that we will write inside of an opening tag we will write attributes okay and this whole thing complete thing starting tag ending tag attributes contents the whole thing combinedly called as html element okay so learning and knowing about html element is very important because Whatever we write inside of HTML markup language is totally HTML elements only. Okay, now let us move forward. Let us see what is HTML page structure. Coming to the page structure, it consists of uh, doc type HTML, HTML. Uh, we will write a whole markup inside of HTML opening tag and closing tag. And this HTML is divided into two parts that is head section and body section okay instead of head section we will be writing metadata title links and all this information is written inside of head and whatever the things which we want to display on the web page that need to be written inside of body tag something like h1 paragraphs a lot of things we'll be learning all the types of tags inside of html we will be learning it now okay so this is about the HTML page structure. Before even starting working on HTML, you need to install a text editor called as Visual Studio Code. You can also install Sublime Text or Atom. There are a lot of text editors in the market, but in this course, I'm going to use Visual Studio Code, okay? To download this Visual Studio Code, you can, you can follow this link or I'll be adding this link in the description, okay? Now, after installing VS Code, you need to install these VS Code extensions like Live Server, Prettier, and Auto Rename Tag. These are the extensions you need to install. I'll show how to install in VS Code. Now, let us move on to the VS Code. Okay. Now, I'll open. I've opened my desktop screen. Uh, I'll. I want to create a new folder, so I'll create a new folder here. So I'm creating a new folder. I'll name it as HTML crash course. Okay. So yeah, I renamed it. Okay. 
Now, I if you want to open this folder inside of VS Code, there are multiple ways. One way is you can right click it, uh, show more options and open with VS Code. Okay, this is one, uh, one type of opening how to open a folder in VS Code. And the other method is you can uh, directly uh, search for VS Code in the start button. And if you click on VS Code, previous window or previous working directory will be open. Okay, because if you are opening it for the first time, empty VS Code window will be opened here. But sometimes if you have worked in uh, previous directory, that will be opened here. So what I'll do is in order to make it easy for everyone. Okay, you can open new window here, new empty window, close the previous window and you can drag the folder, whatever you want to work on. Okay, you can drag that folder onto VS Code. I opened that folder inside of a VS Code. Now, let us see how to install the extensions. Uh, on the side now, but you'll have uh, an icon called extensions. Click on that. Okay, you can search for the extensions with the name like live server, prettier, okay, and add auto rename tag. So I have already installed it, okay. You can click on that extension name, you can click on that install button, that extension will get installing. Okay, now let us create our first file here. Okay, so I'm clicking on new file icon and I want to name it as index dot and the extension should be HTML. Whenever you're working with HTML files or HTML, the extension should be HTM or HTML. So I'm naming it as HTML. Okay, so Every time we want to write a HTML, we need to write uh, same code again and again, some code like this uh, space structure is there now. This space structure, we need to write it again and again, instead of writing it again, again, again. instead of writing it again and again, uh, we, we have some emit shortcuts like emit is an extension which comes with VS code itself. It's a built in extension so we can use emit shortcuts and we can get that boilerplate code. We can call that same page structure as boilerplate code as well. So the shortcut to get that boilerplate code is you should click a shift and one, you'll get the exclamation mark. After clicking that, you can uh, click on tab or enter. You'll get that boilerplate code. Okay, this is the boilerplate code. Let me explain uh, line by line. What is this boilerplate consists of? Okay, so doc type HTML, by this line, web browsers will get to understand that, okay, uh, the file which we are rendering in the website is HTML5 document, okay? So they will get to know by this line, okay? So after that, we will write whatever the markup we want to write, we will write instead of a HTML opening tag and closing tag. If you carefully observe here, everything inside of a HTML is HTML elements only. That's the reason why we have learned HTML elements in tags, okay? This will be the opening tag and this will be the closing tag. And whatever we have written between the opening tag and closing tag, that represents content. Okay, so coming to head, this is the opening tag, this is the closing tag. And here, the whole thing comes under content of head tag. Okay, that's it. Okay, inside of head, we will write some metadata and titles and links. Okay, and uh, coming to body, we will write whatever we want to display on web page. We will write the whole thing inside of a body tag only. Okay, most of the time, we'll be working on body tag, inside body tag. Now... Now, after installing the extensions, okay, you will get this option. If you install that live server, you will get this option, okay? Now, I want to see the output of this HTML markup. So, two ways. There are uh, multiple ways you can see uh, the output of that uh, HTML. So, by clicking on go live, you can see the output. Currently, we are getting a blank page because we have written nothing inside of a body tag. So, that's the reason why you're getting blank thing. So, let me... Uh, use a tag called paragraph. Okay, I've taken paragraph. I want to write some paragraph here. Okay, I'll I'll tell you that every shortcuts what image shortcuts whatever I'm using. I'll I'll be explaining you. Okay, so see here that output is getting displayed here. Whatever the changes you are making here, that will reflect here. Okay, now in order to make make it easy for us, I'll uh, set up my work desktop. Okay, yeah. 
here we are writing the code inside of a VS code and this will be the output of our code, whatever we have written the markup code, okay? Mm -hmm. That will be displayed here as an output. Now, let us see uh, about this title. Here, uh, the name, the title is document, right? So whatever the title you have given here, that will be the tab name in your browser, okay? So I will rename it to HTML crash course or introduction. Because we are learning introduction about HTML, right? So I have renamed it to introduction. See here, uh, it got renamed to introduction, right? Now let us see some basic tags in HTML. Coming to the basic tags, let us start with uh, headings. So I will remove this paragraph. Okay. So I've saved this. Okay. Yeah. Now I will write H1 and you can click on tab. You will get this. Uh, opening tag and closing tag automatically. So heading one, I've written this, heading one. And you can write like this, heading two. Instead of writing it again and again, what we can do is we can use emit shortcuts and we can write easily, very fast. Okay, so let me write the emit shortcut here. If I want to write H1 with some content heading one, what I can do is H1, and after that, whatever the content I want to write inside of H1 tag, that need to be given inside of curly brace. So heading one, okay? You need to come to the end of that line. And if you're not getting any suggestions, use a shortcut called control space. Click on that control space. Then you will get suggestions, emit suggestions. Okay, if you click on that, you'll get that H1 tag with the content heading one. Okay, if you save that, you'll get heading one. Okay, now similarly, you what you can do is instead of like totally, we have six headings instead of HTML, right? So instead of writing it one by one, we can write at a time using emit shortcuts like H dollar. Okay, wherever I want a number, right? There I need to place dollar. Okay, then the content should be heading and here also I need a number right so I will place a dollar and totally how many headings are there totally six right so I need six types of headings here so I will multiply it with six then I'll get six tags okay six heading tags with uh, different different numbers from calc it will start counting from one till how many you are like whatever the number you have multiplied it with so from one, starting from one, it will count till six. Totally, it will get six elements. So here, I'm not getting suggestions. So what I can do is, if I click on control space, okay, I'll get the suggestion. Then I'll click on tab. So I'll get six headings here. So I'll remove this. Yeah, these are the six headings. Totally, we have, in HTML, we have six headings. Okay, let us learn the importance of comments. Okay, here I have used a comment called and uh, I've commented it as headings, right? Because you can use comments in multiple ways. Like for suppose one use case is we will use comments for making other developers understand what we are writing. For suppose uh, on the same project, multiple developers will be working, right? So you have written some developer one has written some code and developer two has written some other code. Okay, all the code need to be kept inside of a one project. But whatever the developer one has written, developer two should understand that code, right? So in order to make understand it, in order to make it easy for all the developers uh, to understand the code, we'll be using comments, okay? And the another use case is if you want, if you don't want to. Uh, display the output of the code you can comment that line as well for suppose i don't want this heading one to be displayed on the output so i commented that so if i save that you are see here we are not able to see that heading one this is the other use case okay yeah so this is about comments and now let us see what are paragraphs okay we do have uh, paragraphs inside of a HTML, okay, we do have a paragraph tag. So it is nothing but a P tag, P tag for paragraphs, okay? So for paragraph, what I can do is instead of writing a whole para, okay, there is an image shortcut. 
that is if you use lorem and how many words you want you can give that number that many number like 100 or 200 whatever you want for now i'll give 45 or 50 words okay i want 50 words you should get this suggestion if you click on that or if you click on tab or enter you will get that whole paragraph here okay see here i'm able to get the paragraph right okay this is about paragraph now let us see about links okay yeah links are hyperlinks okay uh, in a website links are very important because in order to navigate between different routes or different pages or different sections links are very important we can get link using a tag called anchor tag it is called as what it is called it is called as anchor tag let me write it here and anchor tag right so whatever the uh, text that need to be displayed on the screen uh, okay that need to be written inside of an a tag or an anchor tag let us say uh, it is github okay okay that will be displayed here but you need to like whatever the website you need it need to be redirected that link need to be kept it inside of an attribute called href okay so this is nothing but an attribute we learned it in HTML element syntax, right? href is the attribute name and this is the value. And instead of a value, you need to place the link of that website, whatever the website you want to redirect to, right? Uh, what I'm doing is I'm taking GitHub, okay, as a link and I want to name it. So I've given the GitHub link here. So I saved it. So see here, it will get redirected to the GitHub. All right that's it okay give me a second what to get to it yeah okay now let us move forward this is about the links and now let us see about images okay we can also insert images inside of a web page right so we need to write a tag called image use a tag called image img you should not write image totally image spelling should not be written here it's a tag called img img stands for image Inside of a source, you need to place the link. Whatever the image you want to insert, you need to place it here. Now, what I'll do is, I'll take new tab, new window. Uh, so I'll search for some image. Okay, let it name it as GitHub logo only. So I'm searching for GitHub logo here, right? Mm, yeah, I'll take this or else I'll take this. Okay. I'm right clicking on that and I'm copying that image link. So copy image link. I copied that link of the image. So what I'll do is I'll, I'll place the link inside of this source, right? So here we do also have an attribute called alt. I will explain about this a little later. Okay, we got a very big image. Okay, so now we can also add attributes called width. For image tag, we have width and height attribute as well. You can use 300 pixel width. So that got adjusted. Okay, what is this alt attribute is used for? Okay, for suppose, the link got broken or or else you did not insert a proper link here for suppose let me br break it okay by using this okay actually we we want to display the image on the web page but that is not getting displayed because of the wrong link right so instead of that if image did not got displayed on the web page then we want to display that here there should be an image but it should um, due to some reason because of network issue or some wrong link issue okay uh, because of some issue the image did not get displayed properly okay so uh, we can give this alt attribute okay this alt attribute will work whenever uh, the image is not getting displayed this text will get displayed on the web page showing with along with the image icon here okay this is saying that actually image should be displayed here but it should uh, due to some reason it did not get displayed so uh, the image is github image okay you can write anything here whatever the uh, 
text you want to write, you can write inside of this alt attribute. Okay, but it should be relevant to the image. Okay, so let it make it uh, to the normal stage. Okay, the image is getting displayed. This is about the basic tags. Now let us move forward to the next section. Now let us see formatting tags in HTML. The formatting tags which are available in HTML are bold, strong, italic, emphasize, delete, insert, subscript, and superscript. Okay, we will see this in action in VS Code. Okay, now let us move on to the VS Code. Okay, now uh, let me take a new file for formatting tags. Formatting tags.html. I've created a new file and to get the boilerplate code, okay. I need to right, use an image shortcut shift one, you'll get an exclamation mark after clicking on enter, you'll get the boilerplate code. Okay, after clicking save, uh, here, whatever the uh, output we are able to see, that is uh, the previous output. Now we want to get the new one, right? Formatting tag. So in order to get this output, you can also right click and uh, open with live server. You'll get an output here. Yeah. And I placed it here. Okay. Yeah. Now let us see the poll tag. Hold. So I'll write it same. Okay. Now let us see the second tag, which is strong tag. So we can write the same name here. Strong. Right. Yeah. Strong tag. Uh, the difference between bold and strong is both are uh, looking similar. They will. They are similar, but strong tag will have little more importance when compared to the bold tag okay so that's the only difference okay i want to bring the strong text into the next line so that i'll be using a tag called break br tag so okay i'm using break tag two times so that i'll get some spacing between that okay now i'll do the same for the strong tag as well yeah after that i will write italic Italic tag. Italic. Okay. So I'm using two break tags. After that, we will so have emphasize, which is, oh, sorry, emphasize. We will define emphasize with EM. Okay. That is the tag name we will use in HTML. Okay, here for the italic and emphasize also, there is nothing much difference. Emphasize tag will have more importance, little importance when come, little more importance when compared to I tag, italic tag. Okay, now let us move forward to the delete tag. So delete tag, uh, we, will, we will write delete tag using del, okay? Then, which is nothing but delete or else uh, we can say, uh, say it as strike through. Actually, what it does is it will strike the text, whatever you have written inside of del tag, delete tag, it will strike off that. Okay. Coming to the next tag, it is insert. Now, what I will do is instead of writing it again and again, the break tags, I will duplicate it. Okay. To duplicate these things, what you can do is uh, the shortcut is shift alt down arrow. Okay. In order to move that break tags to the next line below line, uh, I can use a shortcut called alt and down arrow. Okay, that will move. How many times you want to move line by line up or down using navigation, you can move those things. Okay, coming after that, what I can do is insert. Okay, we have insert tag called, we will represent insert using INS. Okay, so insert tag. So here, uh, what insert tag does is it will underline the text, whatever you have written inside of it, it will underline that tag, okay? It will underline that contents, okay? Whatever you have written there. So I will duplicate this thing. Sorry, I will duplicate this thing and I will uh, bring it down using alt down arrow, right? Okay, after that, after insert, we do have subscript and superscript, right? Subscript. Okay, what does subscript does is, okay, it will, uh, let me explain with uh, this example, H and two and O, 
if i want to write something like h2o i want two in the subscript in that cases we can use the subscript okay this is an example you can use in multiple uh, places according to your need coming to the superscript it it is just like a power to the text okay for suppose i want to write 10 power right so instead of that what i can do is 10 super 3 so i'll get 10 power 3 kind of a text displayed in the web page these are the uh, formatting tags now let us move to the next section now let us see how to work with links okay what i'll do is i'll create another file here named as links.html i'll close the previous working directory and this is the common thing right so i will name it as links okay so i want to get this output so i'll right click and open with live server and i'll arrange this one I've rearranged this windows. Okay. Now, what I'll do is I'll close the other tabs here, and uh, it is taking up a lot of space. So I don't want this uh, navigation bar, side nav bar. So I'll close that explorer. So the shortcut to close that is control B. So how do we insert links in HTML? Hyper you can also call links as hyperlinks. Okay. So coming to the link section, link with uh, default target, you'll get to know what I wanted to say. Uh, using anchor tag, right? Yes, whatever the name you want to keep here, let us name it as GitHub. Okay, the previous uh, same link, I will use the previous link, whatever we have used in index.html, I'll use the same link here as well. So, yeah, I'm able to, okay, uh, see this GitHub on the web page, right? If I click on that GitHub, it is getting redirected in the same tab. That is the default behavior, okay? Um, you can also call, there is an attribute called target for the uh, anchor tags, okay? You can give four different types of values to the target attribute. That is blank, parent, self, and top. How am I getting these uh, suggestions? Okay, you need to install an extension for that called as HTML CSS support. Okay, so that's the reason why I'm uh, getting that suggestions here. So if I click on, uh, like how am I even getting suggestions? Like if you need to uh, enter a shortcut, press a shortcut called control space, then you'll get the suggestions. That is the same shortcut. Whenever you want a suggestions, you need to just enter control space. Okay. So the default behavior will be, okay, whether you mention it or not, self, okay? Underscore self is the default target behavior of a link, okay? So that will be the uh, default behavior. I'll keep it like this for your reference. So I'm duplicating it. What is the duplicating shortcut? Shift, Alt, Down, Arrow. And I have added an attribute called target self. Now see here, I will also add break tags here. So it will be clear. Yeah. So uh, let me name it as GitHub link to for, for a while. So to know the difference, that's it. Okay. With the uh, land or else with the self target. Yeah. Okay. And like this. So if you click on this, okay, that is also behaving similar. Okay. This is the behavior of self tag. Okay. That is the default uh, anchor tag behavior. Now, Coming to the next tag, okay. Link with the uh, target self, okay. So what I'll do is, I also copy this. So what I'll do is, I'll duplicate this thing. Link with target blank. There is an another uh, target attribute called, which is as blank, right? So selecting that. With Bank target. Okay. If you click on this link, it will get open in the new tab. Okay. See here. If you click on this link, you'll the link or the redirected page, whatever the page you are getting redirected to, that will be opened in a new tab. Okay. That is the behavior of blank. Okay. 
Now, uh, you might have a doubt and a lot of people will have a confusion between self, top and parent, right? So I'll explain with an image because it is very difficult for me uh, to explain this because it is a complex uh, topic uh, to explain. You can use iframes, okay, here. That will be a best use case uh, to explain that uh, links. So here, what, okay, let, like, first, let us try to understand this image, okay? So these are, uh, frames are nothing but iframes. We'll use iframe tag and we'll insert another website instead of a website, like some portion, okay? So here, the frame one is a portion of another website and the frame two, we, can, we here, we have multiple uh, iframes inserted into our main website instead of tab one, okay? If you have, okay, self target, then that will be displayed instead of a same frame itself. If you have parent target, that will be displayed or opened in the parent frame, okay? If you have a top target that will be opened in the main tab like everything will get replaced with that the whole tab content will get replaced with the uh, link or redirected link whatever it is okay blank is a default behavior like you know if you click on the link that will be redirected in a separate new tab okay that will get opened in a new tab okay i'll give this as a notes as a reference to you you can check it i'll give the link for this notes in the description okay let me try to explain it with iframes example okay so what i'll do is i'll do i'll take an iframe and i'll link it to that index.html this is the relative path what it does is like frame border i'll give one okay what it does is okay another html or an another page okay which is here i'm using index.html right okay uh, can be inside inserted inside of an, like one website for suppose inside of a links web page i am inserting index.html web page in this website right so here i am getting this right okay here i do have github right if i click on this okay github is not allowing the framework so what i'll do is i'll change the link inside of an index.html so i'll change it to the local file for suppose i'll i'll give it uh, the link to the this one okay another html file so what it will happen is so if you click on this link github link okay it will get redirected to the formatting tags page right it is getting uh, redirected to the that website so here if you have a target of inside of a for like inside of html index.html okay if i have a target attribute with blank okay or else parent okay if i have target attribute with parent what it will happen is when it was self, it just got opened inside of this iframe only. If I click now with a parent, right? Remember, it is with a parent uh, target attribute. So it is getting opened in that tab because we only have one parent, okay? Similarly, top as well. Let us see target blank as well in the oh, action. Like if I play, keep it a blank, what it will happen is, Okay, here, if I click on this, it will get open in new tab. Here, we have the old total document is here and the, uh, it got opened in separate tab. Okay, got it. I hope you got the difference between what is the difference between blank, self, parent and top. Okay, you can understand with the help of this image. I'll share this notes with you so that it will be easy for you guys. You can uh, get this notes uh, by clicking on the link in the description. Okay, this is about the links. Now, let us move forward to the next section. Before even move into images section, let us see the syntax of style attribute. We will always write the attributes inside of an opening tag. We already have seen that, right? So, the style will be the attribute name and this, whatever the value, we will write inside of a quotations, right? Inside of that quotations, we will write multiple properties. 
and the syntax for the property is property colon and property value. So suppose whatever the styling attributes you want to add, properties you want to add, you can add here. Like if you want to give a color of a blue, you can give, okay? Or else you can use a font or formatting and properties will be there, okay? You'll get to know these all these properties inside of a CSS uh, crash course, okay? Uh, for now, uh, remember that uh, this is the syntax of style attribute. And after that, now let us see the CSS syntax. The CSS syntax is you'll, you'll have a selector, okay? The selector can be, you can select elements using uh, tag name or else you can uh, select elements using classes and IDs you will get to know in uh, later okay for now remember that this need to be the selector and after that we will place curly braces inside of that we will write multiple properties okay every property will be separated by semicolon okay this is the syntax now let us move to the images section I am opening I am creating a new images file here images.html okay Okay, and I'm writing the boilerplate code. Images. You know how to insert an image, right? So what I'll do is, I do have some images here. I will just copy paste them, okay? I have downloaded some images. I'll copy that into that HTML crash course folder, okay? That will directly come here, okay? Yeah, here they are. There are multiple ways to insert an image. Okay, we'll see one by one. First thing is inserting an image from local machine or local, okay, local computer. Okay, uh, like you can you can give the relative path to this. Uh, there are two kinds of path that is relative and absolute path. I'm using it uh, here. I'm using relative path. Okay, uh, now. Here, uh, I need to go into that images directory. After that, I want to get the image of DevOps. So I've selected that. Now, uh, I'll open the output of this. Okay, this got opened here. This is the image, so I can control. Uh, okay, I'll give DevOps attribute and also the width to the 30, 300 pixel. Okay, this is the image what I'm getting. So I'll resize it. Okay. Okay. This is how we can insert, sorry, inserting an image. Okay, it's a typo. This is how we can insert an image. Okay, uh, from a local machine. Uh, after that, we can also insert, we have already seen that insert an image using, uh, okay, link, right? We have uh, done that instead of a, uh, index.html so i'll just uh, use the same here as well okay so this is how we can uh, by just uh, copying and pasting the link of that image okay so we can get the image here okay this is the other method and you can control or you can adjust the sizing of that image using attributes by adding attributes like width and height okay for the image okay remember that this width and height attributes will be only applicable for uh, for few tags that is for image video audio for that tags only you'll be having this width and height attributes for the other uh, tags like paragraph and uh, h1 and all those things you will not get that that attribute okay this is a default attribute for these elements to some elements only okay okay uh, now let us see how to size like work on sizing or styling okay image there are two methods using using styling attribute style attribute okay so what i'll do is yeah you already know how to size an image using attributes called width and height, right? You can also do that using by adding an attribute called style. Inside of it, we have already seen the syntax of a style attribute, right? You need to add the property first. What will be the property? The property is width. And after that, you need to add colon. After that, you need to give the value of it. For suppose it is uh, 200 pixel. pixel. And after that, you need to give semicolon, okay? If you want to add multiple properties here, 
you need to separate them by semicolon okay so what i'll do is 250 pixel height okay got it right now let us yeah keep it like this okay okay if the content is going outside of the screen here actually okay so what i can do is i can use a shortcut called uh, alt z to wrap the content so that the content whatever the content is there that will be displayed within the screen okay so that. now you can also uh, you know this right using width and height properties this simple i am just using the same thing but i'll be using with property here with and the value should be inside of this this okay you can also style like that suppose i'll give 100 okay you got it right okay then now we can also insert images in the background as well okay so we can't do with tag okay all we need to do is i'm using a tag called div uh, we will use div tag for container purpose okay so what i'll do is i'll add in a style attribute okay with the uh, same i'll increase this and copy this okay i'll also add property called uh, border so that uh, it will be easy to recognize. I, uh, you'll get to know about these properties and all when you watch that uh, CSS crash course. Okay, I'll be uploading that as well. Okay, this is the thing which I have uh, inserted this day. Okay, I want to place an background image for this. Okay, so what I can do is I can add a style attribute here. Okay. I want to target that div element. I will target that. And you can give, okay, background image attribute and you need to give the URL. So suppose uh, I'll take this image link. Okay, I'll paste it inside of this. Okay, uh, I've given that background size need to be covered, okay. When I give in that background size cover, then the image is able to display, right? These are the CSS properties you need. You'll get to know about the CSS properties later in the CSS crash course. Okay, in this way also, you can insert an image. This is called as a background image. Okay, uh, you can also do the same thing, okay, for body as well. Okay, for now, what I'll do is, if you give it for the body, it is also getting displayed there. Okay, I'll remove that. It's looking very ugly. Okay, after that, there is another method, okay, which we will use in industries, okay, mainly that is using picture, okay. Inserting images using picture tag. There is a tag called picture, okay. Okay, instead of that, you need to add uh, tags called, okay, source. Instead of that source, for that source, you'll have attributes called media, okay. For that, uh, you need to give some minimum width. Uh, no need to remember everything, okay. I'm just uh, uh, explaining you that uh, there is a method uh, where we can insert images like this as well. Okay, that's, that's the only uh, motto why I'm uh, telling this means images okay go on buddy images forward slash and uh, devops okay and uh, finally you need to give it a, a default image as well what I'll give is java dot oh, sorry images and java dot png yeah, this is Java, okay, uh, course that I'll give. So the image will get displayed here. I'll also give some width, okay, with 400 pixel. Yeah, okay, let me make this screen big, okay, now. 
I'll comment out the remaining code so that it will be easy for you to understand. Okay, I'll, I'll be only keeping this code. Yeah, I commented out uh, the remaining code so that it will be easy for you to understand. So, okay, I have inserted this image. If, okay, the screen size is minimum width, right? Okay. Okay, there is something, okay. Yeah, I didn't give the DevOps dot, whatever the extension it is. What is the extension it does have? JPEG, right? Okay, DevOps dot. JPEG. Okay, this is okay. Uh, whenever this breakpoint has hit 650 pixel of uh, width has hit, the image will change automatically based upon the breakpoint you have. Okay, let us uh, change to let me change to max width. Okay, minimum width only. Okay, then uh, 400. I'll keep it as 400 as well. And after that, I want to Java full stack JPEG. Okay, if the width is a minimum of 400 pixel, okay, then that image will display. And if it is uh, more than 4650 pixel, then DevOps image will be displayed. If it is less than 400, okay, this, the default image will display. This is about the picture. We'll be using this picture tag in the real time projects. Okay, so that's all about the images. Okay, we'll be seeing more on images in the CSS crash course as well. Okay, now let us move forward to the next session that is tables. Now let us learn about tables. I'll do is I'll create a new file which is tables. Let's do it. I'll be giving the whole code as a GitHub repo. I'll give the link of that github repo in the description you can check it okay now let us see the output for this table section and close the remaining things okay let's decide okay coming to tables i'll open this coming to tables we'll insert table using a tag called table okay so inside of table we'll we'll have different tags that is okay tr tr for table row and TD for which stands for TR stands for okay give me a second TR stands for table row and TD stands for table data okay these are the tags what we will be using in tables okay now let us see how to insert the table okay uh, how many uh, like let us say we want uh, four rows with four columns okay then uh, how many rows we want? We want four rows, right? TR into four. We'll get four rows. And I want the content inside it as well, right? But here, be careful whenever you are working with the table because inside of table row, how many cells you want, you'll be defining it inside of TR. So suppose T TD should be always inside of a table row because TD means one cell, okay? So this is the table data cell one you you are getting that okay but in order to look like a table what we should do is we should add an add uh, styling for that okay so it is for tables it is a mandatory thing so that's the reason why i'm using this okay so i'll use border one pixel solid and zero 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 i'm getting that okay um, now let us say i have multiple rows I said four rows, right? I have four rows, but I need four columns as well, right? Then these TDs should be four, okay? In each table row. So instead of uh, copying and pasting it multiple times, what I'll do is you can use a shortcut, like insert the cursor wherever you want to uh, replace all those things, okay? What I'll do, I'll remove this first individually you know selection shortcuts as well then that will be very good okay i'm placing multiple cursors using by holding the alt key you can uh, mouse click wherever you want uh, multiple cursors i want uh, uh, cursors here right so i hold by holding the alt key i've clicked it so after that you can paste whatever the content you have copied now i got the whole content right 
Uh, to make our work uh, easy, you can use uh, Emmet shortcuts. Okay, whenever you're practicing, okay, you can use uh, Emmet shortcuts to make uh, work faster. Okay, table. Inside of that table, what I want is TR. Okay, which gives a result of inside of table tag, you will get a TR tag. Okay, inside of that. So table in uh, Angular bracket TR. Inside of TR, I want TDs, right? Okay, TD. Okay, how many TDs I want? I want four columns, right? So now let us say five columns. I want five columns, right? Okay, five columns. But, okay, if you see this, you're only getting one row, but you want four rows, right? So for that, what you can do is, okay, you can wrap it inside of a parenthesis and you can give multiplied by four, then you'll get this four. Okay, see this table inside of that, I want four TR. So that's the reason why I wrapped it up. Okay, uh, whole thing inside of a parenthesis, I have given instead of TR, I want five columns. So TD into four and the whole thing into four. Okay, now instead of TD, the content should be like cell and the cell name, whatever the like number. So I'll get the whole data. Cell one, cell two, cell three. Okay, you got it, right? Now, let us see different examples on tables as well. You also have T head, okay, TH. For suppose, if you want to name it as headings, right? So what you can do is, I want to replace everything at the same time. So what I can do is, I will select everything instead of TD, I'll give th. This will become okay heading. So I can give the styling for th as well. Okay, the headings will be displayed here. Okay, what uh, whichever cell you want to make it as a heading, you can give it as th. Okay, okay. You also have some attributes called call span and row span here. Okay, so for now, for suppose. I want to make this heading, cell one heading to be displayed for two columns. So I can use an attribute called call span and I will give a value of two, okay? So whenever you are using two column spaces, okay? So that need to be equal to the five columns, right? But this two and four will become six. So I will be deleting the second column so that uh, the column number will be equal, okay? So this column is equal to two columns. You can do the same for the row as well. So whenever you're working with row span, be careful, okay? So I want to span it till three columns, okay? So this cell need to be spanned to be three columns, right? So I, I should delete the every first column in every row, okay? Then it will get spanned to that okay? three rows. Got it. You can utilize this row span and call span like that. We are getting some spacing here, right? We can uh, remove that using border collapse property using collapse. Okay, that then the border will be collapsed and spacing will be zero. Okay, you can also use cell spacing as well. Okay, if you want to increase the spacing between the cells, you can use the property called cell spacing. That's all about the tables. Now let us move forward to the next session. Now, let us see list. So I am opening the VS code. Now I have created a new file named list. Okay, you already know how to create a file and how to uh, get output using live server, right? Okay, now uh, let us see list. In list, we have three, three types of list. One is unordered, unordered list. Another one is ordered list. Okay. And another one is definition list. Okay. We have three types of lists. And the most important uh, list, and we regularly use these two types of lists, unordered and ordered list, okay? Coming to unordered list, we will use a tag called UL to display the unordered list. Inside of UL, we will give LI items, that is list items. This is common for every type of uh, 
ordered list like whatever the type of list it may be li item is common and based upon the what type of uh, tag you are using here whether it may be ul or ol or dl okay it defines what type of uh, list it is whether it may be ordered list or unordered list or definition list okay for unordered list we will give you will okay so to make work simple i'll be using event shortcuts i think you are you got familiar with the event shortcuts right inside of ul i want li tags how many uh, for the each li tag okay i want a content of list item and whatever the number it item it is i want to give that number for it and after that i want five items like this okay yeah i got five items okay Def the default type of unordered list is disk type okay you can also define uh, like the bullet points whatever you're getting you can change that as well like by adding an attribute called type attribute okay like if the default one is disk okay so there will be no difference in the second one okay and you can also give circle as well okay so sorry you know uh, how i'm duplicating right the shortcut for duplication is select the content whatever the content you want to duplicate select that and the shortcut is shift alt down arrow after circle i want to give square yeah these are the types of uh, totally four right huh we also have none as well like uh, sometimes you might not want uh, the unordered list uh, should like another you should have uh, the bullet points then you can use type none okay type disk circle square and none these are the types of unordered list you have okay now coming to the ordered list okay ordered list you will define with ol okay ol can li with an item called item uh, list item sorry list item and space dollar and how many we want five okay ordered list by default okay uh, what i'll do is i'll comment the ordered unordered list so it will be easy for you so for me as well no need to scroll it down okay i commented that okay so uh, the default one is a numbered list numbered ordered list okay so you can also give type like if you want alphabets as a order then you can give that as well so or else small alphabets you can give that as well uh, then also give roman numbers small roman numbers and capital roman numbers as well these are the types what you have okay in ordered list okay i'll comment this as well okay these are the two mostly used regularly used lists okay ordered list and unordered list coming to the definition list we'll have dl inside of that you'll have definition term and definition description dt okay for suppose we'll have a and describing a okay you'll have some indentation for the definition description okay okay the, this description defines this term okay like that you can give multiple definition terms here okay that's how you define definition list. That's all about the list in HTML. Now let us move forward to the next section, which is forms. Now let us learn about forms. I'm opening my VS code. Okay, I've created a new file uh, with the name of uh, forms. Okay, so here we'll be able to see the output. Okay, so we'll always write form instead of a tag called form okay we'll always build a form using a tag called form okay now we'll have different input types in a form okay before that let us see a another tag called as label okay for suppose if you are using first name let me if it has first name okay you'll be able to just like it is just like a paragraph tag kind of a thing the purpose of a label tag is to uh, give a label for an input tag that's it okay so suppose uh, here this inputs label will be first name but 
this in order to link this label tag and input tag you need to give okay for attribute here for suppose first name is the for attribute value and this value and id attribute value should be equal okay so whenever you click on this this input box whatever the input you have linked the label to will be automatically focused okay uh, for suppose here we have uh, linked this label to this input box right so whenever you click on this label the input box which is related to it relevant to it will automatically get focused okay this is the thing okay remember that the fur attribute of a label and id attribute of the input should be same okay okay this is one input type now let us see how different types of inputs available in a form okay so this is a type input type is the default input type will be text okay i'll come i'll be commenting this okay we'll be seeing one by one so i'll also close this so we'll get more space to work so input and the type should be uh, for suppose another type will be email okay input email the input type is email you can also add add an attribute called placeholder instead of labels okay this is the new trends okay new websites will have placeholders only okay uh, so that a user will get get to know that here he should enter email okay you will also have an attribute called required okay you can add that attribute to it so that a user should cannot submit the form until and unless he fill this field okay like that okay now let us see different types of inputs we also have input type like uh, password okay so here whatever you type here okay in, will be appeared in the format of password remember this name and value attributes are also important okay whenever you are working with forms okay whatever the name and values you are giving here okay uh, give a relevant name and value uh, values here because this will get submitted for the backend servers in the database okay so whatever the value you want to give if you want to give default values you can assign here okay i am not giving any default values here yeah. so let us see another type of input which is checkbox okay you can also give checkbox whenever you are working with checkbox you should give label okay here for suppose i want to give some uh, i want to take a name as process uh, which is react or else html and uh, courses is the name and uh, value should be whatever the value you have given here that value get equal I'll comment out uh, the remaining fields. Okay. <laughs> to select the duplicate things, uh, you can double click and select one file, one text, one word, and you can uh, click on Control T and whatever the duplicates available there below the text which you have selected, that will be selected. Okay, CSS. And this is JavaScript. Okay, what are the courses you are interested in? Something like that, then you can check, click on check boxes. If you click on this also, it will work because the name, uh, sorry, the ID and for attribute should match. If something is didn't match properly, then it will not work properly. Okay, yeah. This is about checkboxes. You can, we'll also have, uh, I've just duplicated it. We can, instead of checkboxes, we can also give radio buttons. Okay. Here, if the name attribute is equal, okay, then you'll be able to only select one option only. Okay. That is the use case of radio buttons, right? You should be only able to select only one, one option among them, right? So, uh, if you change the name, Okay, by mistake also, uh, more than one option will get selected. Okay, so don't do that. So remember that the name attribute should be equal for all the values which belongs to the same group. Okay, so this is about the radio buttons. 
and you can also have input type of a button okay so you'll get the button and whatever the value you want to give you can give okay submit or something like that you'll get the button here okay and you can also give okay input attributes like file as well then you'll be able to uh, select and choose a file okay add a file and you'll also have attributes like a date and time input date then you'll be able to select a date from the input type and you'll also have input type called as a time okay then you'll be only able to select the time from that and you'll also have input type number so you'll be only able to write numbers inside of it you cannot write alphabets or characters anything okay you, you'll be only able to write the numbers inside of it in okay and after that you'll also have a first phone number we'll use an attribute called type tell okay uh, that's all about phone number and uh, for inputting uh, large paragraphs or comments or addresses to input the address instead of a form we have in a tag called text area okay where you can uh, give a large input inside of it a paragraphs okay so text area is the input and you'll also have uh, to choose uh, multiple options okay you'll also have a tag called select instead of select you should give something called as options whatever the values you want to give so suppose value one okay uh, two three and four if i give like this okay let me okay that's it yeah if you give values here we will be able to get a multiple options here okay that's all about select and uh, these are the mostly used inputs and you will also have input type search as well okay where you will be able to use this input for searching okay and you also have many other inputs uh, like uh, input type color. There are a lot of inputs, okay? But mostly used inputs are whatever I have told till now, okay? I have covered most of the important input types in form, okay? This is about the form. Uh, we'll cover more about the form in after completing HTML and CSS uh, crash courses, we'll cover, uh, we'll do a mini project on form as well, okay? That's all about form. Now let us learn media tags in HTML. I have opened a VS Code and I have created a new file name it and named it as media tags, media.html. And I also added some media files like video and audio to insert here. Okay. So here we are able to see the output, right? So now uh, let us try to insert audio first okay we have a direct tag called as audio to insert okay here you can give the source of it okay you can also give the online link if you have embedded link okay for that you need to use iframes so now i am using local link okay media files i have input it on audio okay you will not get audio directly displayed in the output until and unless you you should add an attribute called controls if you didn't give that you'll you'll be not able to see that uh, audio controls here okay so after clicking on this thing you'll, you'll be able to play the audio okay yeah i'm stopping it okay coming to the video uh, similarly to the audio you should give controls here okay and here what i will do is media files i've downloaded some video so i'm also giving some attributes called and i have already told you that for with for video and image tags and audio tags you'll be having a default attributes called as a width and height okay yeah now the video is getting played okay similarly this is how you will insert audio and video okay we can also insert video from youtube as well let us go to youtube here okay let us try to insert a video from youtube okay uh, what i'll do is free copyright videos okay i will try to insert some 
रेडिया हो ओ सॉरी yeah i'll try to insert this okay what i can do is i'll go for it. I'll open it in a full screen so that i'll get a share instead of that you'll get an option called embed okay you can use this frame iframe thing okay you can copy this okay and you can directly insert it here okay so let us see whether we are getting that or not i didn't save it now so here we are getting that video right yeah it here we are getting the video here that's all about the media tags okay this is how we will insert audios and videos and you you can also insert videos from youtube as well okay that's all about the media tags now let us go for the conclusion let us conclude this video by seeing the concepts like inline and block level elements and semantic tags now firstly let us see block level elements okay uh, some of the examples for block level elements are dev paragraph headings and uh, li elements form form tags and video tags these are some of the examples of block level elements and coming to inline tags uh, or inline elements okay those are some of the examples are span anchor tag bold image tag input tag and button these are some of the examples of inline tag okay now inline tags are inline elements okay now let us see in action you have created a conclusion file here html file so i'm closing this okay here is the output okay now coming to uh, block level tags or block level elements okay uh see let us see div okay whatever i have written okay div is used like just like a container okay to place elements inside to wrap multiple elements inside of it we'll use a div tag so suppose i'll i'll give an example to wrap a paragraph with the 20 words okay okay and also i want to insert some headings as well let us say we'll use div okay div tag to wrap multiple elements inside of a one element we'll use div as a container for that okay this is about the div okay coming to the block level elements what this block level elements event does is they will take up the whole space okay uh, whole block okay whatever you write after it for suppose if i write image or anchor tag or any other tag for suppose okay h1 it is which is heading 1 it will come in in the next line okay it will always come in the next line okay because div is a block level element and h1 is also a block level element okay let us try to write an inline element here for suppose span okay i want to write a inline element here uh, span tag or span element okay that is also coming when those span is an inline element that is also coming inside in the next line this is about the block level elements coming to inline elements uh, what happens is it will only take up the space whichever is required for it for suppose if i take image or uh, let us say anchor tag it will be easy okay for me <laughs> so it have something like that i'm not giving any link here if i write anything after that okay lorum 50 okay as it is a paragraph it is coming inside a, in the next lag right if i rename it to bold tag see here okay these two are inline elements that's the reason why whatever the space which is required by anchor tag only that is in, utilized that's it okay the b tag is also coming just in the same line as of Uh, anchor tag because these are inline elements whereas coming to heading one paragraph div all these elements are block level tags right so they will always appear in the new line and they will take up the whole line okay so that is the difference between block level tags or and inline tags now let us see the semantic tags semantic tags are nothing but it div tags okay these are uh, 
use the semantic tags are used uh, instead of div tags because it will be more easy for a developer whoever working on that uh, project it will be more easy for him to understand what uh, section he is working on but suppose if he is writing uh, some portion of an uh, web page then he can name it the tag as instead of naming it as div he can name it as article okay if he is designing some sidebar okay then he can name it as aside okay if he is working on the main section he can name it as main section header and nav if he is working on the nav bar he, he can use a tag called nav if he is working on the footer he can use a tag called footer this will work just like a div tags that's it okay these are uh, only used for naming conventions so that a develop it will be easy for developers to understand that's it okay this uh, these are also all these elements are also a block level tags because div is a block level element right so these are also block level elements that's all for this video guys i hope you have learned a lot of things in this html crash course thank you for watching